a creature of fantasy, returns to a figure line. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys Dragons Series 8 Eternal Clan Dragon. Long forgotten, such creatures are now thought to be myth and fantasy, titans of the ancient realms who dwell long before man, ruling every corner of the earth. But they disappeared, and with them their stories and power slipped into legends, or so we were left to believe. Just before we get things underway and get a better gander at the Eternal Clan Dragon, let me first thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Dragons Series 8 statues. We can have a look at this review. Yes, while the dragons do lack articulation, they more than make up with it in gorgeous sculpting and paint applications. Let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall the Eternal Clan Dragon stands. Some assembly was required. I'll tell you exactly which parts have to be put together. But in the meantime, right to the very top of the highest wing it goes, and you're looking at the Eternal Dragon standing about 12 inches in height, or it's going to be about 30 centimeters tall. Yes, there is some assembly that's required when you get the dragons out of their box. The dragons themselves, the main bodies, the wings have to be then attached onto that, and then the dragon has to attach onto the display base. It's a little now harder once I've now already done all those steps to now remove the dragon, but essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking then the stone-faced base, not made of stone, of course, and then you're going to be taking your statue of, this, of the dragon, and you're going to attach it by the feet that are provided here. To flip this upside down, just to show you where exactly those go, you can see how well and secure those slot into the bottom of the base, pretty much rendering any chance to remove the dragon, short of maybe potentially breaking those slots. Definitely don't want that to happen. And then the other thing I had to install was the wings, but we'll get more into that in a moment. First, let's look at the detailing done here to the display base. And while it is, yes, hollow there on the bottom, there's some really intricate sculpting that they've put to the stone face here. The dragon, of course, perched on top of it. It's got some glorious looking color here. I love the use of the darker grays that they've used here. Primarily, of course, you can see by the way the coloring of the bottom of the base is, that's a more darker gray. But then they've brushed on a more lighter gray just to bring out some of the details on those sharp rock faces. Then, of course, the dragon's going to perch on top of that. And then from there, you're going to have to then add the wings. The curled wing has actually been the one that's going to be facing forward on the same side as the dragon's face. While the other wing, the one that had me more confused, actually does kind of arch back like this. I'm just going to maybe see if I can bring the camera back just a little bit here. The wing itself actually does slot into place, but to be all honest, I actually thought the wing was supposed to go the other way around. It does slot to the point where the tips of so much, somewhat the fingers of the dragon actually lurch forward, uh, not actually backward. And when you get everything then put together, you got yourself a glorious looking dragon. Now the wings themselves honestly aren't as secure as perhaps when you attach the dragon onto the base. Uh, this one wing I found attached more securely when of course I figured out which way the wing was supposed to go. This wing though on the other side doesn't seem to sit as well. In fact, I can actually remove it and just show you what it looks like. Uh, in all the cases of the wings, you're going to get this black peg piece. You can see right there. And then that's then going to slot into the top of the dragon. It's somewhat secure. I mean, you have to kind of wiggle it back and forth to ensure that it's properly clasped on in place. Now, obviously, with the curled wing like this, you really don't want to put any pressure against this for the risk that it could snap or even shatter the plastic. The plastic for the wings does feel durable, and yet it, it sort of has almost like a brittleness to it. I mean, you can kind of feel this if you had this in front of you, that it, it, it has more of a almost brittle type of nature to it. Not something that's going to break necessarily in hand, but something that may break if it falls off, unfortunately, your statue, your statue shelf, or if, again, you're putting too much pressure on, it's best advised to put the pressure down here rather than putting it up, up there for obvious reasons. Getting a closer look at the head sculpt for the Eternal, Tra the Eternal Clan Dragon. That's a bit of a mouthful. Speaking of a bit of a mouthful, there's quite a mouthful that be able to be fit inside the dragon's mouth. You can see some stellar looking sculpting on the inside of the dragon's mouth. Unfortunately, though, like the tongue is painted black. I would have guessed it would have been a different color, but I don't know too much about Eternal Clan Dragons. Maybe that's the color the tongue is supposed to be. Some nice coloring done also for the teeth, both the top and the bottom rows. Uh, more the color of kind of a, an off beige color. The eyes as well, 
pierce in a glorious yellow. You can see the little slits, the little pupils in the middle of those eyeballs. And then, of course, you've got then all these spikes that start from the bridge, sort of the bridge of the nose. We've got a few little traces of it, but then run up the side of the eyebrows. And you can see as they get further up the, the top of its mane, so to speak, you've got these more longer spikes that protrude out the dragon's skin. When you look at it, certainly from the side, it almost looks for a second like there's some articulation in the mouth, but unfortunately you can't move it. I'm not sure why there's a line right there. Could have just been the way it was molded. But yeah, you can't open and close the mouth. There's nothing, in fact, anything that's articulated here on the dragon. It's solely just a staction piece. Uh, you can see as well, like the majority of the coloring of the dragon is sort of more of a reddish. I want to kind of lean more towards kind of like this color with added just a little bit of red hint to it. Uh, most of the dragon, as you can see, is sort of this off raspberry color. And then it's got, again, like that beige on its underbelly with some really nice additional dark wash that they've added to it. And it works all the way down the, like I said, the undercarriage of the dragon. You've got a few little of the scales that also have that same sort of color scheme. And again, you've got these long spikes that stick out the end or along the back all the way down, running down to the very end of its tail. The wings, again, by far the best thing about the dragon. Again, just the sculpting and the way they've sculpted these wings are fantastic. Uh, yeah, honestly, when I was first putting this onto the dragon, I really had a hard time figuring out which way this wing was going to go because I honestly thought, looking at the wing it is now, I thought it would actually be facing the opposite way. But looking online and seeing the images that I saw of the dragon, uh, the wing is supposed to go this way. Uh, you can see the way that it stretched out the skin here, and then what would be like the sort of the fingerlings here of the dragon that stretch out again the webbing of the of the of the actual wings does really make the dragon look super super cool. The color I would imagine that they probably would have used again is sort of more again this kind of reddish color that they've got here, and then they would have then dry brushed or painted across that that lighter beige color that does work really really well with this dragon. Again, really when it comes to this, it's basically more a staction piece. I initially, I really wanted to get into the dragon line way back when. The dragons, from what I remember, what McFarlane was doing before, they were much smaller dragons. Ob obviously, in the smaller clamshell cases we were used to seeing back in the day when McFarlane was releasing those lines, it looks like they have gone bigger when it comes to the releasing of the dragons. And I really like the designing of this one quite a lot. Yes, it doesn't have the articulation that one would come to expect now with McFarlane doing so many of the cool figure lines that they're doing right now. This pulls back a little bit of the articulation, but again, more than makes up for it with some fantastic looking sculpting. Short of maybe, again, the way that the wings attach, not that there would be an easier way to do this. Maybe if they used like little posts rather than actual slots, it might have been easier to attach the wings. But other than that, it's just a great looking dragon. The hardest thing with getting a dragon now of this size is trying to find the space around my collection room is which which always is fleeting in space but try to find a suitable enough space to display such a glorious dragon as the eternal clan one we looked at in this video i unfortunately was one that missed my chance to get my hands on the original dragon line that mcfarlane was doing like series one all the way up to i guess series seven considering that this is now series eight to of course go online and then to pay the crazy stupid prices that they were going for on ebay now of course we are getting a brand new dragon line and again when to bring back the line that they did todd mcfarlane went all out made things a lot bigger because these dragons are certainly a lot bigger than the ones I remember before. The Eternal Clan dragon here also, I think, has a, a variant available as well. And I would imagine as well, the company would want to get the most mileage out of these molds, as good as these molds are, why not re-release them in different color schemes, which seems to be the case. There is also a variant version of Eternal Clan dragon that we will be looking at in an upcoming review. As it certainly goes when it comes to the assembly, the assembly wasn't hard at all. Getting the dragon perched onto the base was the easiest of the lot. And then, of course, adding the wings. The wings were a little harder, of course, because you have to put the slots into the base. And the whole while you're doing it, you want to make sure you're not putting pressure on those wings in case they, in case they snap. And I don't think that they would snap if you're too, if you're careful with them, you should be okay. Putting a lot of pressure on them, and certainly if the dragon ever was to take a tumble... The nature of the plastic that they use for the wings and it just obviously the way wings themselves are a thinner plastic and they have to be stretched a, a greater distance they would be the most likely thing to break on the dragon if the if the dragon ever was to take a fall but again a great looking dragon the hardest thing about this line now is with the dragons being so big having again to find the available space to put these on display because i definitely would want to be putting these on display especially if you're a big fan of dragons like myself what do you guys th though think of the eternal clan dragon from the brand new dragon line series eight from the folks over at mcfarland toys 
Speaking of McFarlane toys, let me go throw throw it a thank you again to the folks over at McFarlane that did provide the sample of the brand new Eternal uh, Eternal Clan Dragons. And we can have a look at this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as well, if you enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. FYI, though, we are also going to be looking more at Dragon Line from McFarland's team. So if that's the thing that you guys would like to come back and see this on this channel, above all else, of course, there's going to be always new content coming onto this channel. But you guys are interested to see more dragons here. Come back to the channel because we will be looking at the rest of the line. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.